Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about the importance of getting full hamstring development, uh, particularly if you're an athlete of any type. And when I say an athlete, I am not just talking about strength athletes, power lifters, things like that. I'm talking about people who compete in any sport, uh, where you are running, jumping, sprinting, pivoting on your feet, any sport. So that would include any sort of track and field athletes, most team sports, hamstring development can become an issue and lack of hamstring development for a lot of those people leads to injuries. Um, and for guys who are chasing aesthetics, I know hamstrings aren't a sexy muscle to train, right? You don't really see them that well in the mirror because when you are at the front, the quads are what you see. When you're turned around behind, the quads are still what you see poking out, uh, you know, around the front. Hamstrings are usually only largely visible from the side. That's the only time they make a big difference. So at any point, you're generally looking in the mirror, you're not noticing your hamstrings. But even for those guys, lack of hamstring development uh, will impact a lot of your other lifts, right? So for guys who are trying to do rows correctly, what I find is that when I get lifters who have hamstring weaknesses, tight hamstrings, things like that, they struggle to perform even uh, pen lay rows, which is the correct way to do a barbell row. They struggle to do them correctly. And if you can't do those correctly, um, that's interfering with your performance. It's interfering with your back development. Now, granted, a lot of those guys say, well, I'll just do exercises I can do. But that's slapping a Band-Aid on it. You're, you're essentially leaving weak links if you do that. And again, hamstrings tend to be underdeveloped for these reasons, because it's not a muscle that you can see. It's not a comfortable muscle to train. Most hamstring exercises hurt. A lot of hamstring exercises make your hamstrings cramp. But when we're talking about things like reducing risk of back injuries and particularly risk of knee injuries, they are important and you really need to maximally develop your hamstrings. So when we talk about hamstring exercises, you guys see me doing good mornings above. This is my primary movement for hypertrophy as far as hip hinges go. And it's not to say I don't use other hip hinges because I do a lot of deadlifting. But I don't do it for volume. I don't do it for hypertrophy. I like good morning variations. It's what I have most of my clients do. It's what I do. Uh, because the good morning is a very versatile tool. And it represents a hip hinge, meaning you're bending over at the hip. Right? It allows for a very, very deep stretch reflex on the hamstring. Right? If you want something that you're really going to feel in your hamstrings, Start doing those with a, a relatively narrow stance, which means, you know, shoulder width. Anything shoulder width or closer, if you bend over far enough, I don't care what variation you do with a good morning, you are going to feel your hamstrings. I don't care if you're doing it high bar, low bar, you're doing it with a safety squat bar like I'm doing there, which is the most back dominant version, upper back. You are going to feel your hamstrings and it's going to teach you how to feel them, how to stretch them. Um, and But you generally want some sort of hip hinge that is going to put them into a stretch position, okay? Because again, we need to develop not just hypertrophy, but you need to develop mobility. And because you're loading to a stretched position, that's what builds mobility, it helps. It is a extremely effective corrective tool for people who have a sedentary lifestyle, they sit a lot, the nature of the good morning will correct a lot of these problems. And it's a hip hinge. And hip hinge is one of the major functions of the hamstring. All right, this will fully develop two out of the three heads of the hamstring. Obviously, there's a third that doesn't fully get worked. But this is more or less your meat and potatoes type movements, a good hip hinge. And again, I want to stress, I prefer the good morning. I'm not saying you can't do a stiff leg deadlift. I mean, we could argue that Romanian deadlifts perform the same function. But we come over to the fact that you can't do as much volume. Now, for someone on a lower volume program who's not trying to get 10 plus sets of that exercise every week, um, you know, the Romanian deadlift might be an acceptable substitute. It's not what I prescribe, but it will totally work. It will work for that purpose. Um, and I mean, you could do other hip hinges. You could do volume deadlifts and things like that. But again, they're going to be harder to recover from. And if our goal is to maximize hamstring development, not just get them to grow, we really need to be looking at, at a little more volume. We need to be looking at exercises which we can do more volume with. Um, then we come over to what you guys see me doing with a glute ham device, doing a glute ham raise. 
we also need not just a hip hinge, we need knee flexion because that is the other function of the hamstring. You need knee flexion. So the knee needs to bend and not extension. Extension is where uh, your foot travels forward, right? And you lock it into a straight line. Flexion is when we curl it like a bicep curl. So for full development of the hamstring, you need something like that. I believe that the glute ham raise is the best hamstring exercise for that purpose. Unfortunately, not everyone has access to one. Also, the vast majority of people are not strong enough to do them. Even who are at a much lighter body weight than me, it's still a body weight exercise. All right, you're moving your body through space just like a pull up or chin up, all right, or a dip. Think of it as, as being like chin-ups for your, for your hamstrings instead of chin-ups for your biceps. It's basically what it is. Uh, but this is the, the opposite. This is a contraction movement. You get a stretch on it at the bottom, but it's not the same stretch you get on the other movements. Right? It's not the same stretch. Uh, so it is more of a contraction exercise because, again, the work is as you are contracting it on the way up. And that's the thing you'll notice. It may unload at the top, in which case you can use bands and things, which is a phenomenal tool, something I will be using more and more of uh, myself. They will allow you to get that peak contraction at the top, but it is more of a contraction type exercise. But you need to get some sort of knee flexion movement. And if you do not have access to one, what are your other options? You could do leg curl machines. Or you do leg curl machines. Now, can that truly compete with the glute ham raise, particularly for our athletes? No, absolutely not. Is it acceptable? Yeah, because if you don't have access to one of those, you're going to need to do some sort of hamstring curl. So you could do them on a machine. Okay, that's absolutely an option. That's an option. Uh, your other option, you can find a way to do them with bands. Right, you can do them with bands. And I've seen some people suggest trying to do dumbbells. I don't know. I, don't, it's, I think it's going to be very, very hard to get a correct uh, contraction of the muscle doing that. So I would personally lean in the direction of finding a way to loop, to loop a band around and do them with bands. Now, again, that's not going to be always easy to set up. It can be difficult to find a way to do that. Uh, because it's going to require you to loop them onto something and then basically bend your hamstring back. But you might find you could do that up against a rack. It might be a way you can find to do it on a bench. Uh, but again, it can be difficult to set up. So that's the other problem we run into with using a dumbbell or a band. It can be doable, but you're going to have to be very, very creative in the way that you set them up. All right? But you need to be doing something that gives you flexion. You need to do something. Um, and I think that's one of the hardest things I run into with a lot of my clients who don't have access to stuff like that. You know, when you get a client who has a home gym, so therefore they don't have access to the machines and they don't have a glute ham device, um, that can be tricky. But if your goal is to maximize hamstring development, you've got to do something for that. Um, and I would say particularly who, who needs to do that. Anyone who does any sport where they jump or sprint. So if you play pickup games of basketball regularly, right? And this came up with one of my uh, guys who we do a ton of hamstring work for, who's actually well over a 500 pound deadlifter. He noticed, he remembers that his knee used to hurt a lot when he used to do a lot of pickup games of basketball. Um, and now he realizes his knee is more stable now that we do this stuff. He does glute ham raises, he does good mornings. Uh, and right now he's a, he's a 515 conventional puller and he has a 545 sumo. So, you know, pretty strong guy, uh, but he, we've had to do a ton of hamstring specialization and he's noted that. So people who are going to do anything where you jump or sprint, you're going to have a much, much lower risk of knee injury. The same thing if you're going to pull heavy deadlifts, right? If you're going to, you don't necessarily have to be a power lifter. You just have to be someone who wants a really strong deadlift. Uh, ideally, you're going to need to maximally develop your hamstrings. Number one, it's going to add more weight to what you can lift. Number two, you're going to be less likely to get hamstring tears and pulls. And I've noted that historically. There were periods of time where I did minimalist training. And I was more subject to hamstring pulls while doing heavy deadlifts. Right. And I've pulled hamstrings. I showed you guys a picture of one when I was doing minimalist type training. Um, I pulled the hamstring and the whole back of my leg turned black. I was able to train, but that's what a pull looks like. A true muscle pull usually bruises. And it's a form of a tear. All muscle pulls or tears are just low-grade tears. 
uh, but you're going to be at a higher risk of that stuff. And it's, it's just something that you need to be aware of. If you want to be really strong at pulling heavy weights off the ground, it would be very, very wise for you to put a lot of focus on hamstring development, not just for performance, but to reduce risk of injuries. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.